Coming up on today's show, Robert Llewellyn's inaugural fully charged live show was a complete hit over in the UK last weekend. Nissan says it's developed a software fix for apparent battery degradation in the 30 kilowatt hour Nissan lease. And Elon Musk says he wasn't joking about adding thrusters to a special SpaceX package for the next generation Tesla Roadster. These stories and more coming next. Hi there, folks. Yes, I'm back after a week's hiatus from the show, and I've got a lot of stories to blat through, so let's get on with the first. Last weekend, my good friend Robert Llewellyn and his team at Fully Charged held the first ever Fully Charged live show at Silverstone Racetrack in the UK, and I was lucky enough to be there. It's the reason that I wasn't able to do a Friday show last week. With more than 6,000 paying attendees, 75 exhibitors, 40 speakers, and more electric cars than you could count, it was not only an amazing weekend to attend and be part of, but also showed just how seriously people are taking plug-in vehicles and renewable energy. Interestingly too, many attendees were non-plug-in owners who were there just to find out more about plug-in vehicles. Here's to next year's event and thanks to Robert, Johnny and Helen for presenting the event. Thanks to my fellow panellists for joining in and of course the entire Fully Charged team for making this event a rip-roaring success. Oh, and thanks to those of you who came up to me at Fully Charged Live and told me just how much you love this channel. It gave me the warm fuzzies. Earlier this week, following hints dropped at its previous quarterly earnings call, Tesla laid off approximately 9% of its worldwide workforce, equivalent to around 4,100 employees. While it was expected that some of the job cuts would come from management reorganization, I've been contacted by several former employees who held a wide range of jobs, including those in Tesla Energy, Solar Panel and Automotive Divisions. Talking to Business Insider, other former employees said they were told of the layoffs using a video conference with 250 other employees. Even those salespeople who'd hit their quotas were let go, with some complaining that they felt very let down by the company. In a leaked email to employees, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said the action was required now so that Tesla would never have to lay off employees again. But sources close to the company say that Tesla will now be severely understaffed with employees already working 60-hour weeks to keep up with workload. Chinese-backed automaker Byton, which unveiled its first concept car at CES 2018 in Las Vegas earlier this year, has just unveiled a second concept car at CES Asia. Called the K-Byte concept, it promises level 4 autonomous driving and may end up entering production alongside the first concept car, which Byton is now calling the M-Byte. For that, Byton says it needs money and it's just announced the closing of its Series B funding round, a round which sees it gain around $500 million to help it fund continued progress in mass production, research and development, and product development. $500 million may seem like a lot of money, but it's worth remembering that Tesla burns through an estimated six and a half thousand dollars per minute. And in that context, it seems Byton is going to need a whole lot more money to bring its own vehicles to market. Over the past eight months or so, owners of 2016 and 2017 Nissan Leafs fitted with 30 kilowatt hour battery packs have been reporting apparent massive drops in battery capacity over extremely short periods of time, suggesting that the 30 kilowatt hour battery packs in these model year Leafs were aging at an extremely high rate. Now, after some extensive research, Nissan has announced it's begun a service campaign to reprogram the battery controllers in affected vehicles, using a new battery calibration routine that should eliminate the problem. Rather than actual real-world battery degradation, it appears that battery controllers in affected cars were miscalculating state of charging capacity, causing increasingly pessimistic range reports. Owners of affected cars will be contacted by Nissan in due course, with the reprogramming occurring free under warranty. After promising its Nero EV would offer a real-world range of 238 miles, which is the same as the Chevrolet Bolt EV, earlier this year at CES Las Vegas, Kia has officially unveiled the Nero EV in South Korea, promising a range of 450 kilometers, 280 miles, on the European test cycle. 
As I've previously noted, the Nero EV will be offered with a choice of two different battery packs around the world, most customers getting a 64 kilowatt hour battery pack as standard, with a smaller 39.2 kilowatt hour battery pack available in some markets making it essentially identical in specification to the Kona EV from Kia's sister company, Hyundai. Renault, which has long held a dominant position in the European plug-in vehicle market, has announced its intent to commit to spending an additional 1 billion euro in the coming months to expand electric vehicle production. In addition to introducing a brand new Renault-Nissan Mitsubishi platform at its Douai facility in France, Renault will double its Zoe production and triple electric motor production facilities at its state-of-the-art motor production facility in Clion. It will also make massive investments at its commercial production facilities where the Renault Kangoo is made in preparation for a next-generation model. All told, the production ramp-up should help Renault continue growing its 38% market growth from Europe from last year. Following an extensive process in which all kinds of proposals were heard, the city of Chicago has announced that it's chosen the Boring Company as the winning bidder to build a high-speed transportation link between Chicago O'Hare and downtown Chicago. The route, which the Boring Company says will take just 12 minutes to travel, will go down in history alongside other great civic projects. At least, that's according to Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel. With digging due to start in three or four months' time and Boring Company CEO Elon Musk promising we could see an operational route in two to three years' time, we're not going to have to wait a huge amount of time to see the system operational. Assuming that is that all of the engineering hurdles are overcome because right now there's still quite a lot of untested tech being used for this building project. Sticking with the boring company a little longer, Elon Musk did answer one burning question many had about the mass transit system. Who would make the 16-person transportation pods that will form the basis of the boring company transit network? Rather than bring in an unknown company to build these pods, Musk confirmed on Twitter that he's intending for Tesla to make all boring company pods, a fact that I'm sure will provide some much-needed cash for Elon Musk's other ground-based transportation company. That company, Tesla, faced some tough criticism this week after the US NTSB released its preliminary report into the fatal autopilot-enabled Model X accident that occurred earlier this year. I'm not going to go into details here as I've already covered it in a separate video this week, but while the NTSB hasn't released its official findings, the preliminary report was enough for Consumer Reports advocacy arm, Consumers Union, to call on Tesla to fix what it saw as major flaws with autopilot. In a statement, the group said that the accident demonstrates that Tesla's autopilot can't dependably navigate common road situations on its own and fails to keep the driver engaged exactly when they're needed the most. Tesla, of course, says that drivers are meant to keep their hands on the wheel at all times, but it is clear, as other accidents have also demonstrated, that people are over-relying on what is essentially, right now, a level 2 driver assistance system. To help address that driver attentiveness, Tesla has pushed a new software update to all autopilot-enabled cars this week that increases the visual and auditory nags that autopilot issues when drivers do not keep their hands on the wheel. It also tweaked the autopilot hand sensor system, a move which some owners complained about as it meant their hands weren't always detected, even if they were holding the steering wheel. In order to keep the system happy, Tesla says drivers will need to pull up or pull down on the steering wheel every 15 or so seconds to prove that they're still paying attention. At least that's for now, because Tesla also announced this week that it intends to roll out version 9 of its vehicle operating system this summer, and it will include autopilot updates that will begin to enable full self-driving features. What that means isn't clear yet, but I can't expect that rollout to be easy if regulators get worried, and I think they will. Continuing its move away from offering battery rental only options for its electric vehicles, Renault has announced this week that it will now offer its Renault Kangoo ZE and Renault Master ZE commercial vehicles with battery packs included. Already available as an option for the Zoe ZE, the option to buy the battery pack outright does away with monthly battery rental plans for those who don't want them, but it still gives customers the option to rent a battery should they be worried about battery degradation. Personally, I always found the battery rental scheme a little annoying with my Renault Twizy, so I'm interested to see just how many commercial Renault ZE customers agree.
After telling us for months and months that its first mass-produced electric car would be called the Mission E, Porsche has announced that the all-electric performance sedan will be known as the Porsche Taycan. Alongside announcing the name change, Porsche has published a series of teaser videos suggesting perhaps some physical or aesthetic changes to the production vehicle will be coming when it arrives later this year. At the same time, it's also announced a brand new digital charging platform for EVs, which it says will give both electric and plug-in hybrid Porsche owners easy access and simple billing to charging stations around the world. Not to be outdone by Porsche, Mercedes-Benz has also been busy this week showcasing its latest working prototype for its first mass-produced EV, the EQA. It did that by taking the sleek compact plug-in to Sicily, Italy, where it put the working prototype through its paces in front of a film crew. Looking at the video, it seems that the EQA prototype is far from production ready. There's still an air of concept car about it, but Mercedes-Benz maintains we should see it entered into production in the not too distant future. It's official. Following an ever-increasing ramp up of interest and publicity for its all-electric iPace SUV, Jaguar has made its first delivery. The lucky customer? Scottish tennis sensation Andy Murray, who was handed the keys back in late March by fellow sports personality and Formula E race driver Nelson Piquet Jr. While the handoff made for a great video, it's not clear if the vehicle handed to Mr Murray really counts as the first production iPace or if it's just a late pre-production intent vehicle for publicity. Either way, as far as I can tell, other customers are still waiting to get their cars and I'm still waiting for a test drive, so I'll keep you posted when I get some time behind the wheel. And finally, last weekend, Tesla CEO Elon Musk joked on Twitter that Tesla would offer a SpaceX package for its next generation Roadster, complete with actual rockets to give it phenomenal performance. At the time, everyone thought Musk was joking, but it turns out that he wasn't. This week, he detailed a SpaceX package would indeed replace the Roadster rear seats with two small composite overwrapped pressure vessels that would act as thrusters, releasing a super high stream of air from the rear of the car to provide high thrust. It seems a little crazy, but it's actually physically possible with the COPVs charged using a compressor powered by the Roadster's battery pack. I'm not convinced this will get past regulators, but hey, it's a fun concept, right? And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and hit that notification bell to make sure you don't miss a single episode. You can also subscribe to both this channel and Transport Evolved Take Two if you want more of us. And if you want to support the independence of this network, then, well, you could make a donation by using one of the two links below or by buying some fantastic Transport Evolved swag from our shop. You really don't have to do any of those things, but it really would be appreciated if you do. And as I told so many Transport Evolved supporters from last week, well, those little donations make a big difference, even if you're only donating $1 a month. So thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week. And as always, keep evolving.